Hello guys, um, Oli Lani Pekin here. Thanks for having me. Um, I am going to take you through a, um, I guess, whistle stop tour of five points that I feel are needed to become a hopefully good creative director. Um, if you don't know who I am, I've got a little spiel to share, you know, taken from my LinkedIn profile. Having successfully launched and ran Superimpose for six years, an agency, creative community, cult brand, alternative learning platform, hybrid business of all sorts that swooped awards such as Creative Reviews, Agency of the Year, and Adweek's Fastest 100 in 2019. The next journey for me is about democratizing and breaking down further the idea of an agency or what a creative business should be. Future Imposes an evolution fit for a new context, streamlined to help craft and create more interest in future without being held to previous standards and practices. Alongside Future Imposes, I launched Flock Together, a bird watching club to challenge the underrepresentation of POC in the outdoors. So, after you've heard the spiel, what that actually means is I have been working in the creative industries for over 15 years. I've been very fortunate to work for lots of brands and agencies and then set up my own called Superimpose seven years ago now. Um, we really came into challenge industry, show them a different way of doing things, more inclusive mainly. Um, and then also in the last year, I evolved that business into Future Impose. Um, so throughout the, those six, seven years, I've worked with pretty much most of your household brands in the fashion and lifestyle space. Um, and yeah, I, as, a, as a creative director, hopefully I'm gonna share some points with you today that are gonna aid you in your journey to becoming a creative director. Firstly, I'd say you need to be very inquisitive. You need to be a type of person who's always interested in uh, everything. You know, have an understanding of lots of things and it, to do that, you need to be interested in lots of things. So really mix it up, your references, really, you know, search out the hidden books in the library, the dusty books that no one goes to, but that's really a key area, being inquisitive. I'm a people person. You're gonna really need to be able to work with different types of people. Um, you, as a um, creative director, will need this. You, you know, you're only as strong as your team, is what I've always said. So how do you get the best out of your team that are going to be different characters? So being comfortable with different types of people, awkward situations, and being able to hold your own, I think is really important um, attribute. Visual storytelling, probably one of the most important. You could probably get away with being a, creative, a good creative director by just being a great visual storyteller and forgetting the rest. Because if you can, our role as creative directors is to create um, fantasy, create imagination, to encourage clients to be like, okay, I fully can see your vision. I trust your vision before obviously producing it. So being able to create that through visuals um, and, and copy is really important. So visual storytelling, you know, great image researching can, and you know, they say an image, you know, says a thousand words. Um, it's so true, you know, lots of people don't want to read, you know, big, long, you know, floaty monologues about an idea. They really want to be able to see it. They want to visualize it. So, you know, having great image research skills is really important. And then lastly, a leader, you know, it's not easy at that position as a creative director, people are looking for you to show them the way, whether it's clients, whether it's your team, whether it's other stakeholders. So being a natural leader is important. And there's things you can do to help with that playing, you know, team sports is an example of, you know, an opportunity to show your leadership skills, but yeah, leadership is important. And then areas that I've, you, areas that I've had where I've, you know created them skills or built them skills or you know working in retail is a great for people's skills you know anyone who's worked in retail will tell you oh my god I'm so thankful for that opportunity even though I hated it at the time I was able to speak to strangers because that's what you have to do in retail same as waiters and waitresses working in hospitality how do you interact with um, a consumer when you probably have no connection to them you know, and a lot of your clients, you might not have that with. So working retail is good. Setting up club nights. I learned so much from setting up club nights. 
you know, the pressure of delivering and that and the pressure and, and that feeling of failure. So, you know, how you market a club night, how you concept a club night, whether through the, how you curate a club night, the space, the DJs, um, the experience, these are real key um, core skills that will help you in the career to add uh, to a creative direction. And then lastly, and what's on why the slide and the, the gift that's on the slide is chat to strangers, you know, open up your pool of references, you know, having great close friends is amazing and family, but you really need to be listening and hearing stories from places and areas that you wouldn't naturally come across because there is where you find your great insights. There you'll find great understanding of people. So that's the top skill set I would say you need to become a great creative director. It's not just about the destination, the journey is so important. Um, and why is because I think there's lots of spaces in the creative industries where you can pluck an idea from the sky, you know, you can just be like, okay, cool, I was inspired by this. And next thing you know, I created this whole film, music video, whatever it may be. But when you're working with clients, um, especially in advertising and marketing, they are expecting you to have rationale for every decision you put. Every word you put on that page needs to be like, okay, because what you're gonna get used to hearing is, but why, why, why? And you know, a lot of clients say this because they're testing you, say this because they don't share your taste, they don't trust you. So the worst thing that could happen to you is when you've done this incredible deck, you think this is the best, every slide, every word is amazing. The client asks you on a call when you're present, when you're presenting it and you know they say yeah but why you go silent that's the probably for me I have nightmares about that moment because you are meant to have answers for everything you meant to understand that brief better than anyone so always anything you put down any idea you put down ask yourself at every stage why 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 I started out as a strategist before I was even close to being able to call myself a good creative before becoming a creative director. So strategy helps me understand the process of, you know, figuring out a opportunity based on research, insight, um, clients, um, direction. Strategy has been the backbone to every piece of great work I've done. So yeah, I always feel that, and I encourage people to go and understand the um, fundamentals of strategy you might not you know see that as a career option but just sit next to a strategist just understand their process and you'll become a great um, great creative director with that understanding I think a lot of people in this space forget the two words you know creative yes and that's what people are drawn to the direction part, I think a lot of people forget or don't understand what that actually means. Direction means you are responsible. So ignore the clout, because that's not gonna come until you've locked down and understood and owned being responsible for every element of the creative process. You have to have an understanding of every single role, whether it's a designer, whether it's an editor, whether it's a um, um, script writer. As a creative director, you need to have a very good understanding because like I said, if the client asks you why, they're gonna be looking at you to have the answer. So, you're, and your team are gonna be like looking at you as well as the leader of that. So yeah, really understanding that responsibility will always lie with you and you want no one to blame is really important. Stakeholder management, like I said at the top, being able to be a people person is so important because you're going to have people that are just, you're going to be working with teams that are in competition with each other, but you need to get, you need them on your side. So when they're on competition with each other and just throwing you curveballs for the sake of it, and you think why it's not because of you, it's because of the, the stakeholders that they've got. You know, one thing that we all have to remember is that the, our client is probably working on 10 briefs. They're not sitting there like waiting for you to, and you know, they're, they really want to just see that you've understood their direction, you've came back with a proposal, it's watertight, and then they can go and focus on all their other commitments and priorities. So being a good um, people person and, how, and, and then being able to manage those different stakeholders well will only serve you well in the long term, I promise you. So it's so important.
And then, yeah, this is something that I think a lot of people might struggle with. Sometimes you have to play the bad guy. Sometimes you, you know, I've, you know, I think I've had a great career of saying what I think. I say what I see, you know, and that, sometimes that might lead to arguments with the client because I've built on passion. Uh, you will only get the best out of me if, if I'm passionate about, the, you know, this project. So, um, Sometimes to get to that point, you have to be the bad guy and you have to let, you know, take a strong line. You know, someone's put a creative on your team has put in all the work and done an incredible job. But what from your understanding of the client and what they need, you might have to say, I'm sorry, but that's not the direction we're going to go with. And it's, I'm not going to be able to explain all the ins and outs of why, but I'm just going to have to let you down on this situation. So being the bad guy and being comfortable in that space, which is never easy. No one likes to, and I hate it to this day, but know that that's going to be opportunities where you have to play that role um so yeah yeah moving on and then yeah that last word out of creative and direction direction means directing people so are you comfortably on spirit on set you know i've been on set with over 100 people at times and everything looks at you when something goes wrong clients looking at you stroking their chin being like what's your next move are you ready to be able to say to the lighting guy, to the set builder, to the props person, yo, I need you to change this, this, this now? With conviction, so important. So yeah, they're the hidden challenges of creative direction, the things you probably should watch out for and not think it's just mood boards you'll be creating. Taking an idea from idea to completion, the building blocks, what's so important about those is, you know, I think the areas for me that I've had to develop over time, over 15, over nearly 20 years, I've had to develop and I've been terrible at some areas, I've been better at others, but deck writing is probably the, the top one. Is can you convince a client to part with 100 grand? You know, can your proposal really entice them, excite them, all of their team to be like, hey, cool, we trust this agency, we trust this person to deliver this, and we want to find more budget to make this happen. Only way you're going to get to that point is if your decks are incredible. And visual storytelling, the copy, the insights you want to share, the um, research you want to share, all of this has to be put together in a way that makes them feel like, okay, cool. Like every slide, I'm excited to know what's coming next. And I've been at agencies, I've been in places where I've put together terrible decks, wordy decks, you know, trying to cram everything on the page. And because you think I can't miss, leave anything out. As I've got older, my team now, what I encourage them to do is say less is more. When you finish putting that deck together, go back and take out 75% of the words. And that's probably one of the hardest skills to do. But once you nail it, you will be writing decks that every single word you know is going to hit like a hammer. So these are things that I, you know, I've always shared with people, you know, as they're on their come up, you know, be, be right with conviction. You know, write like you're, you're, you're writing for a film poster. You know, you, is a film that's power. What is the copy that is accompanying that film? Like, it's only a sentence or a paragraph at the most. That's what we're talking about. Reduce your fluffy, fluffy words. Take all of that out. Um, next is image research. I've talked about that already at the top, about the importance of being able to bring to life an image. A lot of your clients are not going to have the imagination that you have. So how are you going to get convinced them of your direction without showing it them so going and having good image research is important getting off simple platforms like instagram and i don't know tumblr pinterest and going to buy books guy buy 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 books my house is just full of books because i know that any project that will come along i'm going to dig into these and i'll get inspired and hopefully that image will then be able to inspire a client storytelling can you keep people engaged Again, going back to that point of less is more, really want you to build a picture in these clients' minds. So storytelling is important. Again, I've talked about conviction. Be brave, and that will only come with time. That will only come with time because, yeah, as a young creative, I remember being like, ah, yeah, but I want, they said that, and, you know, I think this, and my team is, another person on my team said that, so let me just try and do it all. No, it's like, I like what you said, but I don't agree with it for the X, Y reasons. Client, yes, I see what you're trying to do, but I'm going to tell you this is it. And I promise you, clients love when you bring conviction. 
I learned maybe a few years ago when I was working with you know some a huge brand Gap. I'm gonna say it, but I was in with Gap, and it was with their VPs, like their most senior people. And I remember being in the in the meeting with four or five of them, and I knew we needed to nail it. And I knew they were they as a business were struggling, so they needed to have direction. So I said, let's go in, talk with conviction, and I did it. And I remember they they were just like hanging off our every word, and I knew that. From that point onwards, when you're in meetings, if you speak with conviction, you probably won't be challenged. It's weird. It's a weird loophole, let's call it. Learn, understand speaking with conviction and you'll be going very far. Um, across all of those points, deck writing, image research, storytelling, conviction, try and improve it in, across each phase. You might not be good at one part, one thing or be better with the other, but please have a try and increase your capabilities across all um, as, you, as you move through your career. I have run agencies, I've worked in, in, the, in the most high pressure environments for, yeah, like I said, nearly two decades. It has taken its toll. It really does wear you down. And for me, probably about seven years ago when it was probably six years peaking pressure you know running an agency um I used to go out and bird watch on my own and little did I know at that point but this was the only this was so important for me to create my best work because with bird watching when you're out on your own scanning the skies without any distraction your brain has that space to, to for perspective I used to be able to go on walks with a, at the start, I have a struggling task, like brief, like full global campaign that I'm struggling with. I'll be able to go on a walk for a few hours and come back and in my head, I've got the whole concept nailed because of that environment of the outdoors, you know, is in that space to be inspired um, without distraction is so, so, so important. So whatever it is, you find, try and have that constant space where you can go away from your client work to be inspired, to feel, take the pressure off. Um, alongside that, I've always said to my team from the very beginning, and something that I did when I was working in agencies was have personal projects, projects that are away from client works, projects where you don't need, there isn't an agenda, but just really something that you're passionate about because you know, client work will all, you'll always get watered down. And this is something that you will experience is you will go in with the best proposal. And at the start of the project, everyone's excited. The client's excited, your team's excited. Unfortunately, the nature of the industry is that that will get watered down, whether it's from the client who wants to change direction or the budget restraints might change midway or the partners you bring in don't, um, deliver in your the way you expected them to so expect your concept to be watered down and I think there is a term for it something like project fatigue or something when you deliver a project at the end and you're just like ah, no excitement it's all been sapped out of you so a way of avoiding being disenfranchised because of that happening over and over again and like it happens pretty much every project at my at my level which is fine so the personal projects away from, um, away from client work is so important because you can go back and be passionate, be put everything in, knowing full well, no one's gonna be over your shoulder saying, you know what, that's not gonna work, change that. So the importance of having a personal project throughout your career, always, it doesn't have to be one long one, it could be small ones, it could be a weekly project, whatever it is, commit to it because it will only allow you to make better work for your clients, for other people. So. Yeah, they are my five points. I know I jumped around a little bit, but yeah, a career is not linear. It's not a straight line, a career path. It's not straight anymore. You can bounce around. You can get advice and feedback from so many different types of mentors. So hence why I bounced around. This is what worked for me. Go through it, listen to my words and figure out what can work for you.